All right, here's the word of God for the people of God, and we're looking at verse number 15, beloved. Verse number 15. Um, and I am reading, I'm reading from the English Standard Version of the Bible. And once you have it, say amen. Here's verse number 15. And uh, we're going to look at verse number 15 and verse number 17. Here's what the word of God says. It says unto us, it says, in this small print Bible, and he said, listen, all Judah and the inhabitants of Jerusalem and King Jehoshaphat, thus says the Lord to you, do not be afraid and do not be dismayed by this horade. For the battle is not yours, but God's. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Go down to verse number 17. You will not need to fight in this battle. Stand firm, hold your position, and see the salvation of the Lord on your behalf, O Jerusalem, and O Jerusalem, O Judah and O Jerusalem, do not be afraid and do not be dismayed. Tomorrow go out against them and the Lord will be with you. I want you to shake somebody's hand, look at them straight in the eye and say, this is not your battle. Go ahead and tell them, amen. This is not your battle. This is not. This is not your battle don't take it to heart this is not your battle I want to look at this passage brothers and sisters and just for the little time that I have allotted to me today I want to talk about that for just a moment I want to talk about this is not your battle because when we look at this particular passage of scripture brothers and sisters it is interesting how in a moment of time how one word of information can turn your life upside down. Somebody can bring you some information or somebody can tell you something and that one thing can flip your entire day. Uh, uh, Mother Caldwell, Mother Caldwell, it's, it's one phone call, one phone call, like all it takes, one email, uh, 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 Brother Holmes, one, one, one email, that, that's all it takes. it takes. It takes one call, one text message that can turn your life upside down. And today, brothers and sisters, this is sort of kind of what takes place here in this passage because the word of the Lord has come to Jehoshaphat that there is an assembly of an enemy with his assembly that is going to come up against uh, Judah and Jerusalem. Now, 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 ladies and gentlemen, the, the assembly or the group of army that was coming up against them, uh, they, they're actually of great size. They, they, they had some size. They were, they were actually of great multitude. If you do the research, you'll discover uh, that these that were coming up against them were uh, the Moabites, the Amorites, and um, the Minionites, and they, they, they were coming up, and they weren't coming up for no other reason but to fight. They were coming to battle. They were actually coming uh, to start up something. And when Jehoshaphat does the uh, calculations, he realizes that the enemy that is coming up against him actually outnumbers Judah and Jerusalem. Now, I would like to do this. I like to do this, and I want to do this early in this message. Uh, because it is Judah and Jerusalem uh, that is uh, being invaded. Yeah. And any time that you hear of some type of invasion of the enemy coming up against you, there are two things that that invasion will attempt to invade in your life. What are those two things? It will attempt to invade, number one, your Judah, and it will attempt to invade your Jerusalem. Uh, let me say that again. That, that, that when the enemy comes up against you uh, in, a, in an enormous way, uh, it is the enemy's intent to invade and to destroy your Judah and destroy your Jerusalem. Now, now, now I have to go a little bit further to tell you that the word Judah in the Hebrew actually means praise. Yeah, yeah. 
and the, uh, the word Jerusalem, Jeru, Heru, Salem, uh, means the city of peace. So there's two things uh, that, that the enemy uh, intends to invade whenever you hear of the enemy coming up against you. Number one, he intends to invade and kill your praise, but then invade your peace. Now you may sit there uh, today and act as if you have never heard some news that bothered your peace. Because ladies and gentlemen, brothers and sisters, you can find out something or hear something and your peace can be disturbed. And it is, uh, the, it is, it is the will of the enemy to make you uh, fidgety, to make you agitated, to make you walk in anxiety and walk in fear. Ladies and gentlemen, and not only when it comes to your peace, but your praise, your praise. Uh, that 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 it, it it situations will come and it'll steal your praise. It'll cause you to come to church and not want to praise, not engage in praise. Somebody here uh, this morning didn't feel well. For a matter of fact, a whole lot of y'all didn't feel like praising this morning. Amen. And I, and I don't know. I, I, don't have a, I don't have a clue uh, what that could be coming from because, ladies and gentlemen, it is the will of the enemy to invade your peace and your praise. But now, ladies and gentlemen, brothers and sisters, it is the plan of the enemy to disturb their peace and their praise. And, and I, want, I want to say this to you in the introduction, that whenever you find yourself in these conditions the text is tailored to teach us to avoid being consumed with what you're hearing avoid being consumed in other words you cannot allow the battle of your enemy to become your battle or the battle and the rage in somebody else to become your problem and some of us today are so consumed with other folk battles, consumed with other folk stuff. And sometimes it's not even you that, that's causing your peace to be evaporated out of your life. Uh, sometimes it is the fact of that you've taken on everybody else's problems and that you've taken on battles that don't belong to you. At some point you need to detox yourself and, and, and get everybody else's garbage and everybody else's weight and everybody else's burden off your shoulder. And I want to inform you today that you cannot be consumed with other folks' battles and other folks' stuff. So, 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 so I, I would advise you through this text to avoid being consumed but, but then something interesting that Jehoshaphat does, Elder Graham, something that he does here is that when he heard about it, the, the Bible talks about him now calling all of Judah into an assembly. Verse number five in particular. Verse number five declares, and Jehoshaphat stood in the assembly of Judah and Jerusalem. He called everybody. He said, now everybody, now y'all gonna come to prayer meeting. In verse number three, he said, listen, everybody got it. Well, everybody else, well, let, let me and my wife come. And we'll, he said, no, bring your children, bring everybody. Because when we're, when one of us are under attack, all of us are under attack. And what's going to affect one of y'all going to affect, uh, bring your children, everybody, your dogs, your cats, everybody in your household, because everybody in this moment has to pray. Now, now I, want, I want you to understand that when you're under battle or there is a battle that is raging up against you and you find yourself in the midst of a battle, uh, avoid being consumed with other, pro, pro, other folks' problems, but you need to also assess your crowd assess your crowd why do you say assess your crowd because at the time of battle you need to know you have people that can pray around you yeah, yeah. amen amen see see people are tested and the identity of folk are tested only at the time of crisis you cannot find out who people are and what people are really made of as long as you're in the cool and the calm of the day it is only at the time of crisis and at the time of crunch do you find out what's really in folk. 
And you're going to need to assess your crowd. Make sure that when you're in battle and the battle is after your life, the enemy is after your life in this battle, you got to make sure you assess your crowd. Make sure that you're calling people into your periphery that have a connection with God. I'm going to talk to you just for a minute. I say folk that got a connection with God. And you need to assess your crowd so that when you get in the crowd, you can adhere the command. You can adhere the, uh, the command. You can hear what God is saying. And the people, not you, Jehoshaphat, but the people in the crowd can affirm what God is saying. You need to have some folk in your crowd that have a connection with God that can speak what thus saith the Lord. Now let me tell you why you're so consumed in your battle. Because the people in your crowd most times are the people that are trying to tell you what your enemy is doing. They are the ones that's coming and continuously telling you what your enemy is saying. Let me help y'all for a minute. Because in order to win a battle, you don't need to know what your enemy is saying. And you do not need to investigate your enemy's next move. Because when God is with you, I want to give a shout out to all of y'all who beating your brains out over how you're going to win over this enemy. And you're trying to find out and get, a, get, get the down low on what's the enemy next one. What they said, child. What they said, what they said they're going to do, child. Huh? What they said they're going to, how they said they're going to do it, girl. Huh? Huh? And you got people in your crowd. Assess your crowd. Your crowd is causing more anxiety and more stress in your life. Don't come telling me what nobody around here is saying. I really don't care. Don't come feeling, well, Pastor, you know, I just want to come and tell you these folks are saying this. And these, I don't care what people are saying. Because when you're under the power of God, it ain't what people saying, it's what God is saying. Get some people in your crowd, in your circle, that can remind you that the weapon is formed, but the weapon won't prosper. I can't get no help in here. Ladies and gentlemen, ladies and gentlemen, and in this text, ladies and gentlemen, that's what's going on. They had to have people in that crowd that could adhere the command. And the command came forth, not through Jehoshaphat, but through somebody in that crowd. Jesus. And you know what they said? They said, hey, 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 all this praying. Because I know y'all praying, but they said the battle is not yours. Yeah. Thus said the Lord, it belongs to God. Now let me pick this text for the next few minutes here that I have with you. Uh, for the next 10 minutes, let me pick this text. Because if you understand this is not your battle, then you're in a battle. And when you're in a battle, pastor, tell me what I need to do. I'm going to tell you. Three things I'm going to tell you real quick, and I'm not, I'm not going to dwell long on this because I'm not preaching long these days, amen, since last Sunday. Amen, I'm not preaching long, amen, since last Sunday, amen. I learned last Sunday I can preach short and get a lot done. Amen, praise the Lord. Here, here's what you need to do. Are y'all ready? Are you ready? Y'all say, tell me, Brown, tell me what I need to do. Uh, all, right, all right, when you realize this is not your battle, when you're in a battle, this is what you need to do. Number one, this is deep. Get ready. You need to pray to God. I told you it's deep. I, t I told you it was deep. Here, here's, what, here's what happens in the text. In the text, what happens is the moment he heard what he did in verse number 5 through verse number 12, he calls a prayer meeting. He calls, here it is, verse number 5, and he stood in the assembly of Judah and Jerusalem in the house of the Lord, even in the courtyard, and he began, that starts the prayer, to talk to God to talk to God. Say, hey, 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 talk to the Lord. You need to pray to God. When you're in a battle, pray to God. I know that sounds, you know, Pastor, that ain't deep. Yes, it is. It's deep because when you pray to God, yeah. you need to pray with adoration. Yeah. Adoration. The root word of adoration is the word adore. That's right. 
that when he opens up his prayer in verse number five, what he's doing when you continue to read it is he's adoring God. I told y'all a few moments ago, it's hard to get something out of God when you ain't least adored him. Say, God, tell, well, tell the Lord something that he already knows about himself. And you I ain't saying nothing. I ain't. No, no, open up your mouth and tell God something. Already, Lord, you're wonderful. Lord, Lord, you are the great God. Tell, talk, open up your mouth. See, y'all have to learn that God ain't a God. Stop treating God like he a God way out yonder. And realize he's your father right here. And learn if, if you and, and put it in the in, in the same in, in the same level that you have your own earthly father. Then, in order to get some out of your daddy as a child, you go to your daddy and say, "Dad, you know I love you, don't you?" I mean, especially girls, especially girls, you know, especially girls. Girls will go to their daddy and, and fluff their dad. So, you know, daddy, you know, all rubbing on, oh, daddy. I want to sit on your lap, daddy. You know, daddy. You know, after a while, daddy say, "What you want? You want something?" You won't say, why, why? Because you have spent a little bit of time letting God know who you, I know who you are. I know, and, let, and God loves for you to recall back to him who he is. Oh my God, have mercy here. I, I say in the church, we don't spend enough time in prayer telling God and reminding him he ain't forgot, but he want to know, do you know who I am? And he spends time in this prayer talking to God, telling him about how he is a God of judgment, a God that's great, a God of Abraham, a God that he's a great God. There has to be adoration, but not only must there be adoration, there also must be supplication. Watch this, that your prayer life, one, one specific thing I learned about supplication that, that, that the church need to understand is that supplication is a deeper level of prayer which instructs you or causes for you to lose your position. That, that, now, it's one thing to pray, but it's another thing that when you're operating in supplication, because in the text what you're going to discover is in this assembly, the Bible says, and finally, in the assembly, Jehoshaphat falls down to the ground, bows himself, and prostrates himself in worship. Why? Because that's what real supplication is. That when your God on high has spoken, you learn how to bow yourself and humble yourself. It's prayer, but it's prayer from a prostrate position. That supplication is much dip deeper than just asking and calling on God. But it's you being able to, ladies and gentlemen, go down deep in prayer with God and reverence him while you talking to him that he might confirm what your journey is going to be. Y'all don't hear me here. You can't operate in supplication standing up on your two feet. In supplication, you got to learn how to go down and not only on your knees, but go down on your face. Because when you really need something from God, God need to know that you mean business and you ain't playing with this thing and that you need a right now answer from a right now God who can do anything but fail me. I can't get no help in these middle pews right here. But look at your neighbor and say, adoration and supplication. But then, after you done prayed on that magnitude, there is appreciation. You don't hear me? That when you operate in this level of prayer, of bowing down, laying prostrate, and then you get your little happy hips up, you don't get up and worry. You get up and began to thank him because you know your prayer went higher than the ceiling. But that your prayer went right to the throne room of God. I can't get nobody to hear me here today. And I'm here to tell you that anytime you pray, that's why a praise is always in order. 
when you done prayed and prayed right and you know how to get into the presence of the Lord and I'm talking about into the presence of God without an intercessor without somebody going there for you and I'm praying that y'all will get to the place to where as you don't have to call a prayer partner because the Holy Ghost is agreeing with me right now and I can get in touch with God by myself just in case your number is already busy and you got some else to do that's alright I got enough connection with God and when I finish telling him what I need I'm going to get up off my knees and I'm going to tell the Lord thank you Jesus because I appreciate you because I took the load that was on me I put it on you cast all your cares upon him for he cares for you shake your neighbor's hand and say you ought to at least appreciate him after you pray he ain't done nothing but y'all to appreciate him he ain't moved yet but y'all to appreciate him he ain't turned it around yet, but y'all appreciate him. Because what they did is when he knew he was in a battle, he prayed to God. But not only did he pray to God, number two, when the word came, watch this now, when the word came, in verse number 15, watch this word. He said, and all of a sudden, the word of the Lord came and said, don't be afraid, neither be dismayed. Verse number 15, for tomorrow when you go up, be not dismayed because the battle is not yours, but God. Now, I like this. I like this because here's, 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 here's what I like. Verse number, watch this. Verse number 17, y'all got to see verse number 17. He say, now you ain't gonna need to, you ain't gonna need to fight in the battle. Y'all see that? Yeah, yeah. But stand firm. Here it is. And hold your position. Yeah. Yeah. See, because when you're in a battle, Nichel, you gotta pray to God. But digging kitchen, you also gotta position yourself. Yeah. Yeah. Why? 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 Position? Because I, I, I got this footnote, and I need to tell you. Can I tell you this footnote right here? Yeah, yeah. Positioning yourself is what you do today so that you can win the battle tomorrow. I, I, I didn't make this up, Sheriff. I found this. I found this. He said, he said watch this. Look at, look at the verse. Y'all y'all not looking at the verse? I, it's right there in verse number 17. He said, nah, it is tomorrow you going to go down against them. Yeah, yeah. It's, right, it's right there. He say, tomorrow go out. But don't go out tomorrow before you position yourself today. Don't run out there tomorrow and you ain't prepared. Because knowing, watch this, that the battle is not yours does not constitute no preparation there still has to be preparation god almighty here today see you think because the lord has said the battle not yours it belongs to me that you ain't got nothing else to do yes you do because you can take your unprepared self out there tomorrow and mess up god tomorrow because you can go out there tomorrow and get out of position and get in god's way with your temper tantrum self, with your short fuse self. Because the enemy always gonna be the enemy. But the question is, are you gonna show your crazy self up tomorrow and feed into the enemy what the enemy needs you to feed into him? Or are you going to be able to hold your position? Because the enemy ain't ever gonna stop being the enemy because the enemy only know how to be the enemy. But the question is, what in the world are you going to do when you get there tomorrow? So don't wait till tomorrow to get prepared, baby. He said your position is to be secured today. I don't know what kind of battle you're going to leave this church because your battle ain't in here. I don't know what kind of battle you're going to leave this church to face on tomorrow. But position yourself. So y'all come to church and waste too much time. Yeah, I, I mean, 
And some of y'all in here that waste so much time in church are some of the ones under the most horrendous battles. It, it really troubles me when I know your family is under a, a spiritual attack. And, and your family and your, your household and your physical body and your mind is under all kind of satanic attack and you come to church and wasting time. Worry about what ain't to be worried about. Who they is up there? And who moved that piano? And why ain't this over there? And who said for them to do that? And here you are with your crazy self getting tore up by the devil and the enemy because you so busy trying to see stuff and can't see God has got you in a place for you to get prepared to win a battle. Don't you know God tired of you losing? I mean, he's sick and tired of giving you what you need and what it takes in order to be victorious, but you becoming a victim every time. The devil is a lie. When you understand today that it's time for me to position myself because I'm tired of losing battles that I ought to be winning, tired of losing a fight that I ought to be winning, tired of losing. So come on, say it. Position yourself. Position yourself. Come on, y'all. I got to get out of here. Come on and say position yourself. Now, here's the position. The position is you got to get ready for the battle tomorrow. Got to do it today. So you got to position yourself mentally. It's on the screen. Position yourself. Get your mind together. Because the devil ain't attacking, he ain't attacking your leg, he ain't attacking your torso, he ain't attacking your arm, he attacking your head. He's, he's attacking right here. Because as Paul says in Corinthians, as the head goes, so goes the rest of the body. And so you got to get ready for today, for tomorrow, but you got to get ready mentally. Let this mind be in you come on y'all which was also in Christ Jesus come on my time is running I'm trying to make sure you get it come on somebody so since I don't have a lot of time I'm gonna make you look crazy in church for just a minute take your right hand put it on your own head and say Lord help my mind help my mind get my mind ready because the enemy says I formed the weapon when you get that the enemy is going to trigger you He's going to try to trip you up. Yeah. Wish I had a praying church. So you got to be ready mentally. Therefore not be conformed, Romans 12 and 1, to this world. Verse number 2, but be ye transformed. You can't take your mama's ways out there to fight a spiritual battle. You can't take the ways of your family. And I grew up on this side of town. And y'all don't know me because I get with you. Put your get with you down and put it in your pocket somewhere. This is not a carnal battle. It's a spiritual fight. And you can't fight something in the spiritual with carnal weapons. You're going to have to position yourself and get your mind right. Tell your neighbor, get your mind right, man. Get your mind right. Get ready, mentally, but Deja, get ready, emotionally, get your emotions under control, don't go out there fighting in this battle, in your feelings, get your feelings under control, your feelings and got you messed up so many times, Get your emotions, because once you get your mind right, your mind is now compartmentalized and prepared to hold and handle your emotions. To keep your emotions under control. You can't be fighting no, I don't need you fighting no battle with me and you all in your feelings. Too many of us in our feelings. Y'all, and I know y'all in y'all feelings, because y'all, y'all some of the most un in my feeling people I've ever seen in my life. You get mad and upset and in your feelings over the most sensible thing. Oh, well, since they ain't gonna do it my way, that's fine. I go home. And I just, well, I'm just I'm not gonna share this next year. Y'all, I'm just, I'm just gonna let y'all have it. All in your feelings. When I get up here, I'm thinking about preaching. I ain't thinking about calling your name. I said again, when I get up here to preach. 
And when I come to the side, I ain't thinking about calling your name. My leadership, I have to tell you, a lot of times they have to tell me, hey, don't forget this, don't forget that. Why? Because I don't be caring about you. Oh, pastor, you shouldn't have said that. Yes, I should have. You need to know, I don't be thinking about carnality. That's why I have leaders around me say, hey, don't forget to do this. Because why do I have to do that so much? Because they get emotional. You didn't call my name. You didn't say nothing about me. I mean, when, 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 when do we ever get back to you just glad to be in church? You just glad you made it. You ain't the only one been sick and had to, had to come through hell and high waters to get to church. Somebody else and I didn't call their name. Just be glad I made it. That's a testimony enough. You get mad. I ain't coming back to the church. All day. I've been sick out with the flu for the last three weeks. And, and, and ain't nobody saying nothing to me when I showed up to church. Pastor didn't call my name. Honey, I saw you. But what you don't realize, we in a battle. And I ain't got time for your emotions. When we trying to win a battle. And our sons and daughters are dying. And you in your feelings about whether we called your name or not. Did anybody see me? When we got marriages and families and houses that are being destroyed, and you all, I can't go to war with you. I can't take you nowhere. I have to find the people that are emotionally stable. Man, we're gonna go over time here. I feel it coming. Because you gotta get ready. And yeah, I will call your name when the time comes, okay? Don't worry. I ain't saying I never call it, but you gotta understand the spiritual connotations. Especially when the body is under satanic attack. Especially when our city is, is, is in rambles and in ruins. Especially when they're shooting in the school. Come on and talk to me now. Y'all yeah, yeah, yeah. don't hear me. I can call the road. Especially, especially when drug and drug habits can't be beat. Especially when our young boys are, 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 being, are, are being unjustified and, and, and unjustly in, in, a, in a system that don't work. Y'all don't hear me. And don't understand the snares and the traps of the system. And we gotta snatch these children out. Gotta share that needs us not to be emotional and all in your feelings, but needs you to be spiritually ready to help fight the battle, the unseen battle, the one that you can't see with your natural eye. But there is a principality and there's a power, a ruler of the darkness of this world that is permeating through our city. And he don't need you in your emotions. He needs you spiritually ready. I believe I'm going to preach a little while. Come on, say, get ready, get ready, get ready, get ready. But you got to get ready mentally. You got to get ready emotionally. But then lastly, I'm going out of here. You got to get ready spiritually. Put on your prayer garments. Let's go to battle. Get a word from the Lord that tomorrow when you get up, now that you're mentally ready, emotionally ready, and you are spiritually ready, he said, you're going to go down there, but you ain't going to have to fight. He said, I'm going to tell you where I want you to go. But you ain't going to have to fight. And then, when he said to them, now that you are emotionally ready. Why? Because he said, you're not afraid. He, go, he, go, he said, be not afraid, nor be dismayed. When you get up tomorrow, come on, say when I get up tomorrow. Yeah, that's why the devil should have took you out today. Mm -hmm. Because when you get up tomorrow, yeah. Oh, that's why he should have tripped you up yesterday. Because if he ever lets you see tomorrow, I can't get no help in here. Weeping may endure. I'm trying to work scripture. For the night. 
but on the morrow, that's morning time. I can't get no help in here. When I get my joy back, when I am mentally and emotionally ready, yeah, the devil can't play off my fear because ain't no fear there. That's why the Lord say, when you get up tomorrow, be not afraid, verse number 17, and be not dismayed. So why don't you go ahead and repeat after me because I got to go. I got to get y'all out of here. I'm going to get you out of here on the express flight. Go ahead and tell yourself, when I get up tomorrow, I will not be dismayed. And I will not be afraid. Uh-huh, uh-huh, because that's what the devil has played upon. That's what the devil has tripped you up over. That he's played on your fears. But why aren't you afraid? Well, it's because of my supplication with God. And in the presence of God, I heard him say that I will not lose this battle. Oh, let me tell you something. You might, yes, lose a part of it and lose here. He said, but the end result is the war belongs to God. Y'all ain't saying Ah, look at your neighbor and say, I've lost some battles. Go ahead and tell, I've lost some battles in the past, but I'm going to still win the war. Because yes, this decision is not determined by the first and second round. Don't you determine my fate by one or two rounds when we got 12 rounds to go. That's why when I watch boxing, I don't ever get so excited when they knock him out in the third round. Because I'm just like that guy that got knocked down in the third round with my shaking legs. I'm standing back up because I know the fight ain't over yet. And don't you let the devil play on the battles you done lost in the past. Look at your neighbor and say it's 12 rounds and I'm just getting started. The war belongs to me. Y'all ain't happy. I say I got to get out of here, but won't y'all push me out the door right now and tell your neighbor with a smile on their face, the battle don't belong to me. This ain't my battle to fight, but the battle belongs to God. I got to go now. God bless your heart, because when I tell you this last thing, you got to pray to God. You got to position yourself. But then lastly, he heard that the battle don't belong to them, but it belongs to God. So tomorrow, when he got up the next day, verse number 18 says this. I'm going to lead you into the last point. It says, when they got up, he said, well, now what I'm going to do is I'm going to get my troops together because when he got up the next day verse number 21 says and he took counsel ah and when he took counsel with the people verse 21 say he appointed some praisers and he appointed some singers that's all I'm trying to tell y'all I'm going now because when you understand this is not your battle you got to pray to God you got to position yourself but lastly you got to learn how to put the praisers on the front line I'll see y'all later I say put the praisers on the front line because when you already know that you got the victory the next thing you got to learn how to do is you got to put the praise on the front because the trouble is with church uh, secure a lot of us are putting the praise on the back y'all don't hear me you're going to praise God when it finally manifests and you're going to praise God when the battle is over but I heard the Lord saying don't wait until the battle is over but put the praises on the front line put the praise out front and began to shout right now I'll see y'all later but let me just ask the question I'm not preaching to everybody right now but I'm only preaching to the praisers because tomorrow when you get ready to go back to your situation I come to tell you put the praise on the front because what they did is he said now the strategy is my praise is my weapon and since my praise is my weapon the praise will act 
activate God. Have I got a witness? Some of us wonder why the churches are so dry and wonder why the atmosphere is in such a drought. What I come to tell you is because we don't have the praises on the front. Have I got a witness here? Everybody is going through trouble, but ain't nobody putting a praise on it. Everybody is sick and afflicted in their bodies, but we ain't putting the praises out front. And I'm calling in this church for the praises where y'all please stand up with all the praises. I ain't talking about everybody because everybody can't oh, make it through a battle. But I say, where are the praises at? And the people that believe that praise and prayer is the greatest weapon will shake your neighbor's hand as I get out of here right now and tell your neighbor the praises belong in the front of the line. Look at your neighbor and say, I'm moving on up to the front because I am a praiser. Now, if that ain't you, don't worry about it because when the praises got on the front line and they began to praise God, they began to sing the praises. The next morning when the enemy heard that the praises was coming, the enemy did not expect you to show up with a praise. Have I got any company in here? It confused the enemy because the enemy thought that if he afflicted you and if he scared you up, you wouldn't praise God. And that's what a lot of us are doing every Sunday. You come to church and you make the enemy be the truth because he say if I afflict you, you will sit there and you won't ever open your mouth. But the devil is a liar because we putting the praises on the front line. Have I got any company in here? Because when the enemy see us praising, hey, Brother Kitchen, he don't expect you to praise. He don't expect you to go in like, oh, y'all don't hear me. Shake your neighbor's hand and say, neighbor, the enemy is going to hear me praising the name of God because this battle is not mine, but it belongs to God. Look at your neighbor for the last time and say, neighbor, I got good news for you. If you're going through anything, if you're up against any battle, put your praise on the front. Put your praise in the front. When you go to work tomorrow, put your praise on the front. When you go back to the doctor, put the praise on the front. When you go back to your house, put your praise on the front. When you go down the city hall, put the praise on the front. When you go into the highways and the byways, y'all ain't saying nothing. Put the praise on the front. Have I got a witness? And when the enemy heard the praises of God's people, they began to destroy themselves. Have I got a witness? I say the enemy got confused. I got to leave you for the last time. But look at your neighbor and grab him by the hand and say, neighbor, I declare the enemy shall destroy themselves. And what the enemy meant for my downfall is going to be their downfall. What the enemy meant in order to take me out, in order to take my children out, in order to take my family out, what the enemy meant for my demise, God is going to turn it. God is turning it. God is turning it. Oh, won't God turn it? The doors are open. We got to go. Oh! I'm gone. He'll turn it. I wish I had more time, but he'll turn it. He'll turn it. I don't have no praises in here, but that's all right. I say he'll turn it, Tara.